Watch out when selling off that old phone, an Android factory reset flaw was found that doesn't really secure all your data. Plus, it's no secret that secret questions are bogus and the latest from Edward Snowden, that's right, NSA hacking into mobile app stores. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. I'm Darren Kitchen, and this is ThreatWire for Friday, May 22nd, your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom, and a huge thanks and mad props to everyone who has supported the show thus far on our Patreon. And with that, let's go ahead and get started, because, oh yes, from the Break It to Make It Better department comes an awesome paper from Cambridge University on the effectiveness of the Android factory reset feature. And it's a bit alarming. The researchers are estimating them that some 500 million devices are, well, they're not fully wiping the contents of the disk after using the factory reset feature, which leaves photos and texts and other such data just ripe for the picking. And moreover, a Google Auth token or even a master token were recoverable, and in at least one instance, the researchers were able to actually extract a master token and then use it to give them complete access to the Google data. Yikes, and fortunately, here's the thing, encryption isn't wholly effective either, as the researchers demonstrated that well, the encryption key, sure, it is in fact, you know, encrypted with a salt and the user's password, the crypto footer was recoverable, meaning that the entire volume was susceptible to an offline brute force attack. And, and here's the thing, let me tell you, that four digit pin code, that's not really gonna stand up to an offline brute force attack. Uh, the researchers do advise to use a password with uppercase and lowercase and symbols and at least 11 characters, which is, wow, rather difficult when you consider it's for a mobile device that you may be locking and unlocking a few dozen times a day. Uh, the next, next best advice is actually to go ahead and after doing a factory reset to fill the phone completely with random data, uh, but that's not gonna really help you if you're using the remote wipe feature. The good news is though that the researchers' findings have been made public and they've made technical recommendations that both Google and device manufacturers can use to make the feature more secure. And now for some more sweet research, a team over at Google published a paper titled Secrets, Lies, and Account Recovery, Lessons from the Use of Personal Knowledge Questions at Google. And essentially what's been found is that when it comes to recovering a user's account, secret questions kind of suck. I mean, either the user tries to make the secret question more secure by falsifying the answer, like say, saying my father's middle name is Pac-Man, or they don't lie and the answers are really easily guessed or found online. You may in fact recall a high profile hack, and when I say hack, I use that with air quotes, of Sarah Palin's personal email during the 2008 presidential elections. In that case, uh, the, the hacker figured out that the Yahoo Mail security question well, it was actually her date of birth, and yeah, I know, date of birth. Like, you don't even need Maltigo for that. You can just look it up on the Wikipedia page. Anyway, uh, Google researchers conclude that, quote, security questions continue to have some use when combined with other signals, but they should not be used alone, and best practice should favor more reliable alternatives. Google currently employs both a secondary email address and SMS for account recovery. Also, my father's middle name is Pac-Man. And finally, the latest top secret document from whistleblower Edward Snowden was just published outlining a plot from the NSA and its Five Eyes partners to hijack the app stores of Samsung and Google. The program, codenamed Irritant Horn, used X Keyscore to identify the smartphone traffic of the internet and then track it down to connections to these app stores. The idea was to pull off a man in the middle attack between the app store server and the smartphone of interest in order to send malicious implants to the device, then, you know, grabbing emails and texts, call histories, I mean, really just anything on the phone. Think mSpy from a few weeks back, that story, except on a nation state level. And there is a ton of good stuff in the article and the leak presentations that we will have links to in the show notes, but this brings me to the question of the hour, which is, how confident are you on the integrity of the applications that you download from app stores? For instance, do you trust that developers keep their private keys that they've signed their applications with secure? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. And before I go, I do want to give a huge thanks to everyone who has supported the show so far on Patreon. If you find value from the show and you can, you know, spare just a few cents an episode, please consider becoming a Patreon at patreon.com threatwire. And that's where we can fund this and even, even, you know, 
show off some awesome, adorable fur babies. That's right, maybe yours will be in the next episode. We are hoping to reach our three times a week milestone goal with a rotating cast of Patrick Norton, Shannon Morse, and myself. And so throughout the month of May, we're doing just that, giving you a taste. And I hope you will continue to contribute and help us make this come to you independently and ad-free. But if you can't donate, that's totally cool. Like, share, subscribe, all that goes a long way too. You can find links to all of our episodes as well as the show notes and all the other ways to contribute over at threatwire.net. And with that, I'm Darren Kitchen. I'll see you on the internet.